Oh, as a final Christmas present from the Blade and Sorcery team themselves, we have finally got some news and a little bit of updates for the next official game release update of 1.0, also known as the Crystal Hunt update. Now, from the Baron himself on the official Blade and Sorcery Discord, this is very exciting as some of the first news that they do release on their game page is that we are going to be getting an official skill tree. They're going to aim to try and not make it as much as a basic game tree where it's just like one, two, three with the levels. It's going to be a literal skill tree. So everything that you know in the game so far with magic, weapons, and modded abilities, those are all going to be stripped away when you first play. So all you are going to have is a sword on your back and the fists that you've got. So as you progress through the Crystal Hunt game mode, over time you will have the choice of choosing what you want to upgrade more with the skill tree. Do you want to focus on unlocking magic skills or your physical melee weapon ability? And this will also include spell augmentation, which basically means if you want to combine fire, lightning, gravity and fire together that would be possible or if you want to make a specific spell more powerful there is going to be brand new spell augmentations to unlock to enhance those abilities and make them even more powerful than we haven't seen yet to note as the baron says quote we have at least 78 skills now made ready for the game mode which is bonkers to me that they've got one they have also teased as well that there will be new unlockable things to unlock in, to the <clears throat> in this game mode but there will still be the base game stuff that you will recognize like the basic lightning fire gravity in-game weapons like a bow and arrow a riding sword, all those As I also things. mentioned as well, there will be a multi-path skill level. So depending on how you play, it's going to be how your character is laid out. So at the end of dungeons in the Crystal Hunt, you could be more mage based, you could be more swords based, bow and arrow based, gravity lightning based, but whatever you upgrade more is what you are basically going to be more powerful in. And this is bringing a bunch of new content and new things that they've never introduced into the game before, which is very, very exciting to hear because we are going to be getting a lot. And when I mean a lot, we're going to be getting a lot of new gaming content. With so many skills and effects in the game, if you were to unlock them all at the same time, you might hardly recognize the game anymore. They are going to be trying their best to make it as leveled out as possible so you don't get overwhelmed with too much that is going on so that it makes it a narrowed down immersive experience. Give an example of what I'm on about. The regular fireball is one of the new skills called remote detonation. With this it allows the player to explode the fireball mid-air and control the simple casting fireball as usual. Then the new part is pulling the trigger to make it explode, which is essentially a big fireball bomb. So it adds a little bit of a familiar controls to the new layer of the spell on top. But that's just an example. He does give a simple warning as stuff does get stacked up over time. It might get a little bit overwhelming. So it's important to pick what you're going to be choosing as you're going to be stuck with it until you complete your first, second or third run of the Crystal Hunt maze. The idea is by the time an average player gets to the end of Crystal Hunt, it will more likely have skills unlocked something like two full skill paths plus some change with some skills at the end to go down particular paths and specialize. So the whole point of the Crystal Hunt, it's purposely to make you choose what kind of player you are going to be. So you shouldn't end up finishing the crystal hunt being too many random skills. Yes. They are hoping to encourage the players to replay again and again and again 
so you get different outcomes and you can choose what different skills you set. There will also be a sandbox mode available for the crystal hunt, so theoretically if you wanted to unlock everything, you technically could if you wanted to at the beginning of it to see how OP it can be and just see what you can have fun with. But they are adding an unrestricted reproach to the sandbox game mode as it's gonna be just an all out experience. Like with their original sandbox already, they wanna make it as much fun as possible so you as the player get to choose whatever they want so, to. So a really cool another mechanic that they've added in is called status effect. So if you recall the old lightning, when you zapped an enemy with lightning, they're stunned for a moment and this is essentially an expansion of that. Enemies can now suffer status effects for all elements. So if you would electrocute someone, they'll be electrocuted. If they burn someone, you burn someone. So a really cool example of this, with the staff, if you're wondering how you burn someone, you can now use it in this game mode when it comes out as a flamethrower. So if you stick it in one direction, hold down the button, you'll be able to blow it like a flamethrower. And a little note to the modders, the skill trees that I did mention at the beginning, they are to be confirmed going to be mod friendly. So for all of the Blade and Sorcery modders out there, it's going to be a really great opportunity to add custom modded skills onto there to make it a certain theme or to add simply onto the game mode to make it even better than it is. This will be released in the 1.0 release of the game, and which they are trying for Q4 2024, the quarter year. That is their goal, but keep in mind the features will be complete by December and polished with a bunk fix over a lengthy period of time. So there is a very, very high chance that we're not going to see this for quite the majority until probably. This pretty much means that the devs are going to need a lot of time to make this game mode perfect because they don't want us to go into it being a buggy mess, which is completely fine as this stuff does take time if they want to make it perfect. As right now, that is all we have got. It's some really cool information with the skill trees and some new status effects of the weapons and abilities as I am really excited for this and I hope all the best to the Blade and Sorcery devs as this is going to be a juicy update. Let me know what you think guys and as always my name is Hei Chen, thank you so much for watching, bye bye now.